Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. We had a lot of fun projects this last week, one of which was the new benches for the cut flower garden. We're actually going to start with that video answering questions because today's recap is sponsored by Country Casual Teak. And they're giving away another $2,500 gift card attached to this recap video. So there's a giveaway attached to the video where we unbox the benches and I think that's still open. Mm -hmm. So you can still comment below that video um, and be entered to win that $2,500 gift card. And then in today's video, if you comment below this video on our Garden Answer Highlights channel, you will also be entered to win the $2,500 gift card. I think that's the largest giveaway that we've done yeah. so far. Yes. Super generous of them. It really is. We started our ad adventures with Country Casualty. <laughs> I don't know if you'd call it that. Last fall, Aaron and I ordered four of their benches kind of uh, on the, the suggestion of Aaron Shannon from The Impatient Gardener. She uh, contacted us when we were talking through bench ideas and she was like you should check this company out they are pricey but they're worth it they're amazing quality you know yada yada mm -hmm. and all that so we thought you know what we trust her we're gonna try it out and i'm really happy with the benches we got the five foot monarch benches for behind the hartley uh, and they're already starting to weather which is nice we chose to not have them sealed which teak you don't have to seal it holds up to weather for like, ever there's three options on the website there's like non-sealed which is what you did mm -hmm. and that will turn gray mm -hmm. there's sealed which you can continually do. I think it may be like once a year mm -hmm. you can keep if you like that golden brown look uh -huh. they also come in like a gray but um, I was talking to somebody there and they said that the gray is not like the same gray as when it's weathered naturally yeah, right it will if you get the gray stain it will naturally go to that you know natural yeah gray but it looks maybe slightly painted gray mm -hmm. in the beginning so anyway those are the three options so we went with the un untreated that way it can just gray out naturally on its own which i love that look so i'm excited about that and then so they sent us out the four benches the six foot monarchs that we put in the cut flower garden they partnered with us on that video and then we ordered ourselves we ordered two adirondack chairs to put in front of the pond and then we'll find something depending on how those fit we wanted to start with two of course we want four seats total two for the kids and two for us. I wanna see how those two fit and we might go with two more depending. Otherwise we'll find something a little smaller that matches for the kids. But Also, if you haven't gone to their website, they sell tons of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like they sell like trash can, like park trash cans. Mm -hmm. They sell tables, lounge chairs, yeah. like almost any furniture really that you can think of. Right. Um, or park. Uh -huh. type furniture yeah or uh you know things you'd see in a park yeah so we will link them down below if you want to go check them out again twenty five hundred dollar gift card leave a comment below this video don't be scammed oh yeah don't be scammed don't comment back on any scam we're not a part of telegram or whatever yeah. they always say um our i don't know does our highlights channel have a check mark uh -huh. so our main channel and our garden answer highlights channel it has a little gray check mark after our name and if you click on that name it'll take you to our account and you'll see all of our videos that way you know it's a legitimate account you know responding but we will also uh so you'll see a comment if you are the winner you'll see a comment from the legit gray check mark account and then we will put the name of the winner below the in the description of this video mm -hmm. below this video once we choose the winner so you can always reference that to see if you're truly a winner or... i see those scam comments on even non-giveaway videos mm -hmm. they just they're it's just constant yes and it, it's frustrating that people like click on them and still you know fall for it fall for it and yeah. think that we use telegram we don't um i mean it just it's unfortunate it but is. it's just where we're at so anyway let's jump into that video so in that video there was a couple of things we unboxed the benches placed them out there and then i did it was like the next day i think i went out and uh, harvested peppers so karen said watching the drone footage i realized how perfectly you formed a circle with lines and gardens flaking the corners how in the world did you do this did you use a drone to lay it out or did you have a plan and carefully measure it on the ground we had a plan initially we had it carefully measured on the ground and mm -hmm. we had stakes put in so everything it's not like exact it's within inches though yeah within feet With, oh <laughs> within feet so yeah. don't look too close yeah. what we did for that center circle is we found the center we measured the sides and then like uh, center with the door of the flower shed because that's our, our only solid point in there is that flower shed so we found the center put a stake in and then we just did a string kind of like a compass mm -hmm. and we just drew our circle out do you remember so, originally when we set out the whole cut, cut flower garden so this is the south the west corner right here you can see we've got a ton of stakes in the ground in fact Aaron's going to take the drone up so that you can see uh, even got some brightly colored plates so you guys can see the 
the lines. I hope it makes sense. We have 15 foot walkways and then we have our four corners of our cut flower garden in the, in the center. There's a huge square area where we're gonna put a fountain in and some benches and things like that. Maybe it makes sense with you guys seeing it, you know, top down. I think it, it looks, looks good. I think it looks really great, especially now that the grass is starting to fill in. Yeah. A little bit more filling in on the sides of that mm -hmm. grass, but I even moved my flower rows over and they're still like eh, creeping over the edge just a little bit. Well, even between your walking, you don't have a lot of space in your. It's because like, I'm trying to maximize. Yeah, you are. Mm hmm. Laura Green said, so question about the black widows. I did find a bunch of black widows in the peppers. Can a bite kill you? If so, why would you keep a beneficial spider that can harm a human? Is it worth the risk? I don't never heard of a black widow bite killing anybody. Might I turn mean, you into Spider-Man. Oh, oh. Did you ever think that as a kid? Cause uh, I did. Oh, you did? Yeah, I'm not sure that I ever did. <laughs> I remember one time I was riding my bike and I uh, just got like a spider web in, it was floating through the air and uh -huh. kind of went in my mouth. And I was like, ah, and then I was kind of like, <laughs> you know, like, just in case. Yeah, that's funny. No, I don't think I ever thought that. I mean, if you have an allergy, I suppose, if you have an allergy to their venom. venom. Yeah, I've never that, heard of But I've never heard of that. Dying. My dad has been bit twice by black widows. I think he went to the doctor on one of them. Didn't go on the doctor, to the doctor on the other one. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I, I mean, I think as long as you know they're there, you're never going to, I don't know, just spraying those out, they're still probably... I don't know how many are out there. We've always had black widows, but mm -hmm. I think it's just prime spot for them out there, especially because it was raw ground too. I think that, that was that's kind of going against us in that department. But I know they're there. Everybody else knows they're there now too. So we're just keeping an eye out and try not to spray this year. Yeah. So I would rather not spray my plants that have like peppers maturing right now. I'm not against it, but I don't know. A lot I of sprays to... say that you can harvest immediately after spray. They do, but you know what? I'm not that scared of them. I mean, that day I was like, okay, I've had enough. My foot was in an anthill, and like I seen a bunch of spiders, and I was really hot too. So I was like, nah, let's just call it mm -hmm. uh, today. But like, I'll go back out there and harvest with no problem. I'll just be careful and watch watch where I'm sticking my hands. What I usually do is I'll just grab like the top leaves of the plant just to hold the plant up, and then I'll use my snipper. I use the Felco. What are they? Um, they're the ones with the long, they're the snips. Oh yeah. With the long, I can't remember the number, but I love them. I'll go in and snip my pepper and then I just grab it with the end of the snippers and pull it out. I don't mm -hmm. even get my hand in there. So it works out pretty good, uh, pretty well. <laughs> Spellbinder933 said, those benches look pretty around the cut flower garden. I like the color they are now. How would you be able to keep them that color if you prefer that color by sealing them once a year? Laura said, the benches are beautiful and your pepper harvest was amazing. I'm struggling getting even one full size green pepper. Do you happen to remember what kind you planted? Oh my, they were just in four packs from the garden center. I bet you, I know there's some California wonders in there. Uh, uh, Big Bertha, I think there's some of those. And... I can't remember the other kinds. There might have been something emerald. Was that a broccoli though? I'm trying, I'm trying to remember. It was just four packs I picked up. And honestly, I used to not have luck with green peppers or bell peppers when I grew in raised beds down at our old house. Really? I think that mix that I put in there was junk. And um, yeah. What kind of mix did you have? It was a local oh. soil mix. And then the one we put in here is from Cloverdale. It's like the premium garden raised bed mix and it's so good. Ever since I've grown here and in the ground, in the ground peppers here, I don't know what it is. If it's like the consistency of water, the amount of heat and sun that they get, but they always form up nice thick walls. They're beautiful peppers and I do nothing to deserve it. <laughs> like I give them land and sea and biotone when I plant and that is it. You don't, st I mean, that Cloverdale mix, that was like seven years it's ago. It's probably all land and sea at this point. Yeah, because yeah. you've been amending. Well, my parents used the same. My mom was like, what do I fill <clears throat> these beds with? What did you fill yours with? So they got the same thing. So we'll see how, their stuff's grown beautifully so far too. Yeah. Stoa7 said, how do you know whether to pick peppers when they're green, yellow, or red? It seems you pick some of the bell peppers when they're still green, but others when they're red. Are there different varieties? Yes, they are. So there's green bell peppers, which eventually will turn red as well. And then there's red peppers, yellow peppers, orange peppers. Typically, if you let them color up on the plant, they are sweeter and more mature. Um, oftentimes, so I'll just pick them whenever, like it's convenient, because I'm not... I don't have the time to go out every day and pick out, pick the ones that are ready that day. Um, so I'll just go through and do like a mass haul of everything and they all pretty tasty. Wendy said, will you be doing wheat again? And do you have to move it to another spot? Very sweet photo of the family on the bench. You know, I'm actually in the midst of filming a video about the wheat. So 
it will be up after this one. So anyway, hold on. I will have more information about that and what we're planning to do. And then Ruben said, it's amazing how much you are achieving in that, sort, uh, in that short amount of time. Such an inspiration for a future landscape architect. Question, do you worry about pepper cross-pollination? I heard that it can change the flavor. Thanks for the hard work. I've heard that in peppers too. Mm. Like, don't put your, your hot ones next to your, your sweet ones. Because like corn cross-pollinates that season. But I don't know if peppers do. I've always planted my sweets and my hots together and it never alters their flavor. Mm. So I think I've talked about that before and I got a bunch of good answers and now I can't remember a single one of them. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't it apply in our climate. Oh, I don't know. Or could I don't, that be a thing? I don't gather the seeds from the peppers. We do different varieties every year. So it's not something I have to worry about in terms of saving seed and getting the same type of pepper. I would think that that's where it occurs mm -hmm. is if you gra gather the seed and you've got hot and bells together, you could get some random cross. And if you think you're planting a bell, it could be more spicy than you're wanting. Okay, so we're gonna track, backtrack a little bit. I just started with the bench video since Country Casual Teak was sponsoring today. So we're gonna go back a couple of days to update on the containers I cut back and then a big veggie harvest. Oh my word, those, those containers. No. Oh, they bounce so beautifully. Um, so we cut them back about two thirds of the flower canopy and we did find some aphids. We got those uh, taken care of. We did use spinosad on those, um, which you could either use Cap and Jack's which, dead bug, which is spinosad based, and that handles budworms and aphids. We typically try to just use BT though for the budworms on a weekly basis because they don't attack or, or hurt rather other pollinators. They only uh, attack the caterpillars. BT only attacks the caterpillars. So it's a very benign safe spray to use. But if we, should we find aphids, which we did in the canopy of a few of those, um, we switched to spinosad, which does both. So they got sprayed once and I think that handled it. And heads up, you have to spray the whole thing, the yeah. inside of it. Like you have to lift that canopy all, the, you can't just spray it over the top. You have to lift the whole canopy up and it's a sticky, dirty business but you lift that thing up and you spray that plant till it's dripping and then you stick the thing in the middle and spray that plant and then you do an overhead if you miss some of those bugs they will respawn and you'll still have the problem uh, anyway two weeks later though that's when we did the this update i wanted to show you what they look like after that we did a the spraying we did the slow release fertilizer and then just our normal care and they were back at it color they look even more full now however we've had two pretty good downpours of rain that flattened the grasses both times. They're kind of coming back up, but mm -hmm. not all the way after that second one. And then I went out and I harvested a bunch of onions. I also harvested tomatoes and a few potatoes. Lady Courtney 13 said, I'm already planning next year's garden and those Ed's Red Shallots look awesome. And the Newburgh onions, where did you get those seeds? Both seeds came from Snake River Seed Cooperative. Um, my parents' garden center sells them as well as a bunch of our other, their local seeds. Um, we live right along the Snake River. So I think they're packaged in Boise, mm. Idaho. You might look them up. Uh, Donna said, why is it that sometimes I hear to let the potato plant die back to let you know when they're ready and others are still very green and upright and gardeners are harvesting? It just depends on when you wanna harvest. You can harvest them when they're still upright and green knowing that the potato might be a little bit smaller sized than if you let them go until the plant dies back. Rubu, Ru, Rubu said, do you still leave weirdly grown produce on your dad's desk? <laughs> you know, I picked that weirdo uh, tomato. It was a, uh, it's called cat faced. Yeah. When the blooms fused together and it was like three blooms had fused together. And so I had this weird gnarled up looking tomato, excuse me, tomato. And I didn't even think to put it on my dad's desk. I wish I would have. Yeah. Well, you're not going down there every day. That's true. Sally Dunbar said, what a great quick harvest. Do you ever deal with blossom end rot on tomatoes? I have it every year and cannot get a grasp on it to prevent it. I've tried less water, more water fertilizer. Any help is appreciated. It's, it's not really a water issue. It's more of a calcium deficiency in your plant. So it depends on what your soil is like. Usually like in our area, it would be an issue because um, we have high pH and so it binds up nutrients. So even if there's calcium in the soil, your plant could have a hard time utilizing that because it's all bound up by that, that alkalinity. Uh, this is just in our case as an example. So you'd have to work on bringing that pH down to unlock the nutrients. There's also uh, yield booster sprays. There's like a spray you can spray right on your plant that will help prevent that and that, that works really well too. So it's, you know, work on at, it at soil level, but until you find that balance, um, definitely try, try the yield booster. I think it's like a fertilome or hmm. there might be a bonide yield booster too i'm not sure michelle simpson said aaron question for you how is the mini split working in the hartley 
thinking about getting one in my office in Austin, one million degrees here, would you recommend? <laughs> yeah, I would recommend. We haven't been using the mini, mini split in the Hartley though this year because it just feels like it's not worth the effort of having that thing run all the time. And you have to make sure that everything's so shut up in there. Um, and so we've just kept all the windows open and mm -hmm. I, I kind of like it better because we, we walk right through the Hartley. It feels we keep like the doors a greenhouse, if, you know, yeah, which is and what I it is. Typically greenhouses just aren't as used in the summertime because they are hot and you just kind of keep everything open and just let the breeze, you know, I flow used it through. this morning though. Yeah. It's very nice in the morning and in the evenings really. Yeah. Uh, it would stay much cleaner in there if we could close all those windows. I like that we have it. Uh, in case we do want to turn the yeah. AC on. So, and, and also it doubles as heat and yeah. cool. So. We did use the AC last year though, and it did work. Yeah. Um, and then we used the heat in the winter and it worked great. Mm -hmm. I kept the edge off and really was pleasant in there. Anna Fairbanks said, would you be willing to go over your meal plan process sometime? This is one of my biggest struggles right now and I'm always on the hunt for a fresh idea. Thanks for considering. You know, I just have like a Google sheet where I've got one week's worth of days listed there. And uh, I've got like a column for what I'm gonna make that night, uh, a link if I'm making something new and it's a recipe I need to refer to. And then I have a, a um, column for groceries that I need for that meal. So what I've been trying to do is like on the weekend, I try to plan out our meals for the week. And like tonight we're doing tacos and Spanish rice, like something super easy. Um, so I try to do like some super easy ones I throw in every single week, like hamburgers or whatever, you know, and right now it's perfect because we can do hamburgers and corn and, you know, tomatoes out of the garden. Um, but then I like to try new stuff. So I usually do like three or four new recipes every single week, typically. Uh, but I try just keep track of it there and I just get on the internet and look around for recipes. <laughs> Sometimes you have really good recipes yeah. and I feel like they never make it into the like Oh, rotation. you should see. I've got a uh, main dish keepers really? folder on my in my bookmarks and it's large. You've made a couple with like white rice and like orange chicken like kind of stir fry stuff. Yeah. yeah. And they've been so good and like it just never I have never, you ever considered I never that maybe, it again. Have you ever considered that maybe I did make it again and it just wasn't as good the second time? <laughs> Oh, maybe. <laughs> that might I, have happened. I don't know. Usually, you and I are pretty in agreement, though, yeah. if something is good or bad. Yeah. It's, it's not very often where... In fact, most of the time, I feel like you disapprove. And I'm like, oh, this is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what the, the tip would be, though. I mean, just having a document that's organized for me is helpful. And then having a place where all of our groceries are listed that we need is helpful. And then I just, cause usually it involves some fresh things that I don't have outside. So I like to go to the store and we do DoorDash quite a few groceries. Um, but if it involves a bunch of like fresh stuff, then. I wonder what the DoorDash people think of us. Yeah, I don't know. Cause it's not just us door dashing, like employees will <laughs> door yeah. dash too. People are just like constantly coming in and out. Oh, well. It's convenient. Yeah, it is. Tiffany said, would it be easier on your wrist to use your hedge trimmer for trimming in these aspects? I love my Felcos, but that's a lot of nonspecific cutting that has to be hard on your wrists. Which video is this again? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Forgot. You know, it looks like it's nonspecific cutting, but it actually is. On those, I am pretty specific about where I'm going in and cutting because I don't want to leave a bunch of stubs and weird looking growth on the outside. Even though they're cut back and not looking as good as they did before, I still try to get like cuts to where they're hidden by a leaf you know that sort of thing so you almost need to use like no because i still couldn't do my sp i do specific cut on those yeah yeah really the only thing i do non-specific cutting is when i cut back perennials or cut a boxwood hedge mm. it's kind of the only time where i like indiscriminately go in and just whack stuff back in which case i do use hedge trimmers on those Debbie said, I know this channel is dedicated to gardening, but I would love to see what you do in the kitchen with all that beautiful fresh produce. Do you can tomato sauce? I don't normally can tomato sauce. I have before, but I was thinking about doing that this year because it is one of those kitchen staples that we actually use a lot of like mm -hmm. canned green beans. No, like canned corn, stuff like that. We don't go through ever. I never buy that ever. Um, and then that would be good though. Canned corn. Yeah. Except for I did it like two years in a row and we never ate it. And so I just thought like, but this, that couldn't have been because we didn't like it. We just didn't eat it. Huh? And so I just, it's so much work to like yeah. shuck all that. I like just getting frozen corn in the, in the bags. Maybe if I froze it instead of canning it. Yeah, maybe, but it's still a lot of work. There's some things that you have to like weigh out effort mm -hmm. and taste too. Yeah. Like, 
you know, growing your own stuff is fun, but like, unless it tastes, unless there's like, like tomatoes, tomatoes and corn are two, are two of the biggies. So maybe I'll try freezing some. However, when we're using corn out of a freezer bag kind of a situation, it's usually mixed into other things. It's usually really good. Like I, I don't know that I would be like, Oh, this corn's so much better. Yeah. Mixed in with the beans and the sauces and the meats, you know, right. and all you that. You would be able to know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we'll try it on a small scale. Hmm. Old Schoolhouse Gardening said, what is the difference between drying the onions with the greens on or off? Um, it's a matter of it, the onion bulb being able to soak in that last little bit of energy. There's still some energy in those leaves, still some energy in the roots. The onion bulb will soak that in, and it just kind of helps. It's science. It's <laughs> There you go. And will that rack ever be in the sunshine? Is it okay to allow sun to shine on them as they dry? My dad was saying that. He's like, the farmers just leave them out in the field, just sitting out like exposed to the sun. You're fine if they get a little bit of sun. But I noticed, even though this is the north side of the barn, they do get a little slice in the Did afternoon. Did you put anything? So I put an umbrella up over oh. them that promptly fell over in a windstorm and bent. It still works okay. Did they get wet from the rain? They did, but it wasn't a, uh, I don't know. They're fine. It's I went quite a bit of rain. Them. It was a little bit of rain. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, life happens. And again, my dad's like, because I was telling him my yeah. woes, and he's like, they'll be fine. Just don't stress. It's like if they're sitting in water, they're not going to be good. But we're so dry here normally that it doesn't really matter. A little bit of moisture is not going to kill them. Okay, next video is planting around the beautiful pond. So I had a couple of, I'm trying to remember, a uh, Pocahontas lilac, a Pacific blue Macedonian pine, an Angel Falls eastern white pine, a bunch like seven of those black hawks uh, grasses and then I had some Russian sage and I popped them all in around the pond and they all look pretty and they're all doing really well did I just say pretty no you said pretty did I okay yeah. <laughs> mommy's madness Two said well you need to use the mosquito beater pods from Bonite for the new pond area nope uh, there's enough movement to keep them as there should be enough movement we haven't had it long enough to know but there shouldn't be enough movement to you know breed mosquitoes plus there's dragonflies like you would not believe and they eat what like 250 of those a day wasn't that the ratio i think or something crazy like that Boo do fernando said beautiful laura how do you plan to keep algae from growing in your pond okay so this is super interesting we did have a string algae bloom last week it was really hot out and you know that pond is in full sun it won't be forever we'll have it shaded here once those plants start to grow in and that will help out a lot um, but the string algae bloomed and we have an ion gen which is uh, like right in line with your plumbing the plumbing of your fountain and what it does is it emits little ions of copper zinc and silver i think is what the three of the elements are and it releases those ions into the water and it kills the string algae and like within a day it was like 24 to 48 hours a gone like the string algae and it was thick kind of wonder if we could do something like that with our fountains i don't know but i was like what and it's specifically for koi ponds we did you can dial it so we dialed it up and you're not supposed to leave it on like real high for a long it period was at of five time. and it we was, put it to ten and then i moved it back down to four oh, okay. yesterday just so you know um because it's gone and i don't want to keep it like cranking when we don't need to you know so we'll just keep an eye on things mm -hmm. it's looking beautiful right now i think the extra water it got yesterday yeah. Makes it look quite nice. Aaron forgot the hose was <laughs> running into the pond. It didn't overfill. It didn't. It, it was just, like right to it the just edge. Got, it was so pretty. Yeah. It got filled up. Yeah. Uh, Darlene said, I have a personal request. Is it possible for Aaron to set up a time-lapse camera on the pond so we can watch the koi and hear the waterfall? You could post a video on Saturdays for us needy people that feel the need to see <laughs> more of your gardens. Yeah, we could. I don't know that you'd be able to see a whole lot with like, I could, yeah, we could try it. It would be very easy to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling it would not get very many views. But, but maybe. somebody, you know, Darlene might like it. Yeah. Brandy said, you may have already said, but where do you guys plan on putting the pondless water feature? It's going to be going out into the South Garden. I actually did toy around with maybe having it installed in my parents' like oh, yeah? new orchard area. Well, I call it the orchard because that's what it's been my whole life. But it's like the, the wood, meadow, woods sort of area down there now and it would look so natural because the there's a huge rock wall that leads down to the orchard from their yard it would look really cool there but it would also look really cool out in our south garden we're just waiting for things to i don't know we'll get chris, it in at some chris point. told me he's like whenever you're ready to do that just let me know and he's booked out like he's booked out until next year but i think it's a little project that he can kind of like 
bust yeah. out pretty quick. Well, and I think maybe he might come and do it himself, maybe. Uh-huh. I get the feeling that he, ha- you know, has crews and mm-hmm. stuff that, that do a lot of the work. Because, you know, a lot of times owners that, you know, they've been doing, like he's been doing ponds for, what, like Ever. 30 years or something yeah. like that. And at a certain point, you know, you're the guy that goes out and does the bids and the design work and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But you, you have guys, you have crews that actually do the physical mm-hmm. moving of the rocks because it's like he's put in his time, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, Liz said, question about the pond. Will you top it off with your well water? If so, will the hardness affect the ecosystem? We do top it. We've topped it off a couple of times because you're naturally, especially when it's so hot, you're going to lose some. Um But we weren't given any information that we should be worried about it. I don't think it should be an issue at all. No. And it's not like when you're talking about the relation of the amount to the What else would you put in there? I don't know. You can't. Would you soften? You wouldn't put softened water in there. So, yeah. Uh, Laura said, how far away from the pond can you plant before roots search for pond water? You know, it depends on the plant. I do know I learned this when Brian was here. I was like, oh, look at these beautiful birch trees I bought to put right up next to the pond. He was like, they need to be about 15 to 20 feet away. And then they'll be totally fine because those birch trees will sense that water. And those roots will actually jump the liner and go into the water. However, I think in our area, if you do drip tubing uh like not the brown tubing to where the whole area gets saturated but just Mm -hmm. like what we're doing where you just are watering the plant yeah you know if you look at the birch trees when they're done when the drip has been running you see like a wet spot Mm -hmm. but that wet spot doesn't go out very far it's Mm -hmm. just right where the tree is and i think that that like kind of prohibits roots from going too far out and they have to go down because that's all the water that they're getting they're not getting water 10 15 feet away they're really just getting it right at the root ball. But if you've got a birch sitting right next to a body of water, I think that roots will still sense it and still jump the liner. Yeah, maybe. I think it's a risk I'm not willing to take. Yeah, for sure. I just think that that's why we don't have like ground roots like a lot of other people have yeah. is because there's just not, not an excess water. amount of water on the surface. Mm-hmm. They have to go because they have water, but just right there right. and they go down. Yeah. Uh, Jay Bannister said, I so enjoyed watching the installation of your pond and your work planting around it. Please, could you show us your fish and tell us how they are doing? Um, You know, they're doing great. I count them every day. (laughs) They're kind of hard to see. I think they're still kind of like hiding in the rocks. I scared the heck out of that little hyphen banded shark because it, like I always like to go, there's a stump right near the water and I like to sit right on that. And it was right below the stump and it didn't didn't see me coming because I just like came over the edge and it just like uh, took off swimming as fast as it could Uh, and it's a little hard to see them right now too because of the tannins in the water which are from that log that is sitting down in the water which we could bump that up and help clear up the water but everybody says that those are really good for the natural ecosystem like they're Mm -hmm. good for the fish Um, it does make the water look a little bit on the orange side but I'm trying to decide if that matters to me or not yeah but well, they I think said it could, for the rest of the season, we should just leave it probably. and then decide next spring. And also, they did say that that could wear out or whatever. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know? like the tannins? Yeah, like it may not last forever. It could last a few months and then it could start fading out. And so I think we'll see what happens sure. with that. Arian said, I see you got the gator roof that Aaron didn't like the shape of. <laughs> How are you liking it? It must be very useful in that hot sun. That was a different roof. So the reason I bought it is because it looked... You know, that roof looked fine to me. The other ones that I saw, I don't know if I ever put a picture on the screen or not, but like I saw some that were like very rounded in the front. Oh. And they looked like those. Like a cozy coop? Yeah. It kind of looked like a cozy coop. <laughs> and so I saw these and I thought, oh, well, let's try one. And I like it so far. Yeah. It they're not does... John Deere brand, right? No. No. Um, it makes it look smaller. It does. In fact, Samantha even said that. Oh, we're getting in the little one. Oh, really? They're the same, like, you know, we yeah. have multiple and they're the same mm-hmm. size. But she's like, oh, getting the little one. Mm-hmm. It's weird. It is nice to have some extra shade. Yeah. I will say that. Molly said, doesn't the pond enhance your yard enjoyment so much? Yes, it does. Uh, question, how far away can you hear the waterfall or one running water from your new patio? Or is it truly a secret area where you don't hear it unless you go over to that area? I can hear it from the house. Yeah. Um, it's not, it's perfect though, because I didn't even realize how much traffic noise, like you Mm kind of get used to what you're around. Right. So there is like this belt line that goes, it's not like super close to our house, but we're at the top of the hill. So a lot of the like sound from down there kind of travels up to the top here. And I didn't realize how much 
of that noise there was, and now all I hear is water. It's awesome. Yeah. Except for occasionally when I hear the compression brakes on a truck, which they're not yeah. even supposed to. There's like signs, do not do that in this area. Um, I can still hear that, and then that reminds me like, oh, yeah. Normally, I'd be able to hear cars right now, but right. I'm not hearing cars. I'm hearing this beautiful waterfall. Next video is planting two huge Serbian spruce trees and an update on predatory mites, plus some roads deadheading. So uh, Paul and I got two of the Serbian spruce trees planted that were in my kind of hoard mm -hmm. for pond plants. Uh, I wanted a lot of plants here that we could utilize to put around that pond, and I didn't... I don't know. I just wanted to be over prepared since so many people were going to be here and I wanted to do my job well. Well, we have excess space to, yeah. to plant things. So it's yeah. like it'll get a home somewhere. Right. right. Um, and then I talked about predatory mites and how I am noticing a decrease in the thrip population, not a total wipeout yet, but and I don't really know if I should expect a total wipeout, but I am noticing improvements. And then I deadheaded the roses in the rose garden. Um, Matthias said, have you seen any of the mites since their release? No, they are so tiny you cannot see them. They're these tiny little white, like very, like kind of a f creamy white green mite. And they are tiny, tiny. I mean, if I looked really hard, I could probably see them. Um, Edible Acres Homesteading said, should I prune at deadhead or knock out roses along the same guidelines discussed here? No, those typically, I mean, you just clean up the spent blooms and you don't have to worry about like going back down to certain leaf um, junctions. Those will typically keep throwing out blooms no matter what you do. You could leave the blooms on and they'll still rebloom. Garden Makeover said, does Paul ever plant things where he thinks they would look good and tell you later? <laughs> no. Can you imagine? No. I can't imagine him doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I admit it, I would. Ooh, <laughs> you wouldn't work here for very long. <laughs> wouldn't be able to help myself with all those plants sitting around. I think that everybody who is here understands that what we do, even though it might seem slow and uh, in a way, because there is plants sitting around waiting for their time to shine in a project, but that's just the nature of what we do. So things sometimes have to wait. Mm -hmm. And they are, Paul and Bethany are so good. And like, we haven't even really said anything to them about it, but they'll like, if there's something that needs to be cleaned up that's like kind of on a bigger scale they'll actually text me and say do you want us to clean this up or are you wanting to do this for a video project or you know how do you want to do this um, and they'll check with me before they do it just in case because I might have plans in three or four days to do that very project so occasionally I'll say nope I'm going to be doing that you know on Thursday or whatever um, so there's a lot of communication that goes on and it works out really well some projects are fun to show on video and some are just not Right. Or it's like a repeat. Like I could do guard maintenance every single day of the week, you mm -hmm. know, and there's only so much rose deadheading that one wants to watch, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you hit it every once in a while, then I feel like that that's good mm -hmm. just to keep things different and a little bit more fresh. Yeah. I guess. Uh, Wendy Breedlove said, well, you have to throw the rose, rose waste away so it won't infect other areas of your garden with the pest. Yes. Well, it will goes, goes into our pile, which we are going to be burning. Um, so we've been putting everything in that hole. <laughs> Out in the uh, new property, there was a big hole that was dug so that we could use the dirt in the berms around the pond. Uh, so we're just putting everything in there. And it's going to get so hot here in the next few days that everything's just going to fry in there. So I'm not really worried. I saw that. Um, and I don't think that video is included in today's recap, but the one with the dahlias mm -hmm. where Monica and I deadheaded. People were like, oh, my goodness, are you not going to like bag it and get rid of it to get rid of the thrips? No, I'm just going to put it in the hole and it'll fry in the 104 degree heat that we yeah. have coming up here pretty quick. Um, do the thrips fly or? I don't really know. Do they, do they travel? I think they like, I think they do fly. They, they, it says they can fly, but they tend to crawl as their main mode of transportation. Hmm. So and if they're going to fly, I don't know how far they could fly. That hole is distance from ev anything we have growing. Yeah. They wouldn't survive no. the, the, the journey. No, I wouldn't think so. Allison said, did Paul and Bethany know a lot about gardening before they worked for you or did they learn from you? I think that Bethany has quite a lot of knowledge just because she grows a big garden. Paul, I don't no. think he had as much knowledge, but they're both smart in the common sense department and in mm -hmm. just like the real life department that um, they just they just pick it up. It's not like I'm teaching them, but I do know that they watch a lot of our videos too. If they're getting ready to do a certain task, they don't have to do it now as much as in the beginning, but they'll watch just to see how I've done it in the past, which isn't that awesome. I never asked them to do that, um, but they'll like watch a video on rose deadheading so they know how I do it in my own garden so they can do it the same way. Ina Bates said, Laura, what was the plant you used as a sacrifice for the aphids problem, aphid problems you had? 
a couple of them. There, three. There's uh, Brussels sprouts, amazing host plant for aphids. Uh, calendula is another one, and um, Nicotiana. Any of those three plants you can put in the garden anywhere, and it will probably keep the rest of your crops clean of aphids. Melissa said, it is 6 p.m. and I'm watching. Question, Laura, I purchased two David Austin climbers. I guess I do not understand. I thought I could put them on a trellis. I read that flowers would only be on the ends. Do I need to spread them sideways for the lateral stems to bloom like you did on your chicken coop? Yes. So I would, I would watch the chicken coop video. I did a climbing, how to prune climbing rose video was it this last winter or the winter before? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can find it and link it down below because I go way more into detail than I can spend time on right now. Karen Noble said, so how many more spaces left in your rose garden for new plants? Oh, there's like 30-ish, mm. 30, maybe over 30. There is spaces enough for 86 or 87 roses. I think it's 86. I initially thought 87, then forgot about the big flower pot. Oh, that's right. That's in the beginning, so I did eliminate the first one. So I think 86. And we've planted, I want to say, in the 50s somewhere. Maybe it's close to 60. I don't know. We've planted a lot this year. And the last video from this week was our August garden tour. Best August ever. Just because we've had such a great year. We had such a long, cool spring, a lot of moisture. And then we only had like less than 10 days over 100 there. Mm -hmm. It was like a week of over 100. Was it last year or the year before where we broke some records? For like the most days over a hundred. Yeah, I think it was last summer. And then wasn't this it? year, like I feel like we're breaking records for like rain and yeah. coolness. Well, this last weekend it was like fifty six when I got up, and it was foggy and misty, like it was misting on me. I was outside taking some photos because I'm like, this is a rare opportunity. Um, and then it, I think the high was like low eighties, mm -hmm. like at the end of July. Or well, I guess that's we're into August now. Yeah. <laughs> Beginning of August, that's unheard of. Uh, so it's been really nice. I mean, just in in uh, terms of hostas, if you look at my hostas, they look so much better. They're starting to show a little bit of um, weariness at this point, but by now we usually have very little hosta left because we've groomed so many tattered leaves off of them. So you can really, like, costas are the barometer for yeah. how the year has gone. Judy said, do you think you will redo the brick up near the house? Oh, that attaches to the walkway? Probably. Well, yeah, we're still in. That's the brick that was done last fall. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I don't know really what happened, except for they used a different kind of sand that doesn't match the sand that they had been using on mm -hmm. the bricks up to that point, and they were joining the bricks. So that doesn't make sense to me, and I didn't, I didn't know they were doing that, and I don't know that it was put on 100% properly, and so it's got that film over the top. And they went back to the old sand for the new brick patio, and you know those, the sidewalk and that brick patio meet at mm -hmm. one point, and it looks wildly different. Mm -hmm. And I know that he had the, the sand rep come out, and they were trying different cleaners. We've already tried all the cleaners and the power washing and acid and all kinds of stuff, and nothing works. So I think they need to be taken out and redone. Mm -hmm. That is so unfortunate. Oh, it just kind of makes me sick. But I mean, it's it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's bricks. But yeah, we'll probably have to redo it. Uh, Double Take Rot said, you mentioned that you only sprayed your apple trees once and you were seeing worm, worms, same here. Would you please do a video on how you are going to spray moving forward, assuming you are making changes? Yeah, that won't be until next season. So I'll, I'll do much more rigid spray schedule on just the apple trees. I almost kind of thought, you know what? Is it worth it to have apples in here? There are apple orchards everywhere around our area. Yeah. Like if I want apples, I can go buy a box really easily. And then I can just have this orchard full of stuff I don't have to spray. Like the apricots and the mm. nectarines and peaches. And I do the liquid copper. Um, and I can't remember what the other one is off the top of my head. But I do a spray in the winter that helps like with leaf curl and things like that. But none of the other trees are affected by bugs like the apples are. The weird part about it is though is that the honey crisp tree the apples are sizing up beautifully but those are all wormy the fuji apple tree they're a little smaller but very little worm damage so maybe i could get after that one mm -hmm. and ward off any other damage and we could get some apples off that one this year i don't know linda said do you have basketballs coming over to your yard and a new pond and now pond from the neighbor's visible basketball net. We do not, I don't think we've ever had a basketball come over. We've had a few tennis balls because that morphs into a tennis court. I not sure I can remember them ever playing basketball. No, it was just on that court. tennis. They do set up a really tall net. I don't think it's there right now, but they had that really tall net up. I think the kids are old enough that 
yeah, there's most of the, their kids are gone. Yeah. Um, so, and then it's not really, it's not a thing. No, it's not. And the plants that are in there will eventually shroud that basketball hoop. You won't see it anymore, but we just have to wait. Elizabeth said, does your golden rain tree have a mist that you can feel when you stand under it? No. I remember as a child being invited by the owner to stand under theirs to feel that mist. It's a memory that stuck with me over the years. No mist to speak of around here from the golden rain tree. That's weird. I wonder what that is. Yeah. Uh, G6 Fancy said, how do you keep your incredible hydrangeas from flopping? I can't seem to keep mine from flopping even with supports. Uh, you gotta trim them. I uh, usually wanna take off about a third of the branches and that helps them create a really strong framework down below. So other than that, I mean, you gotta make sure they're getting enough sun and enough, the right kind of water. Sun, water, and pruning, I think, are the biggest things for those. Terry said, so enjoyed your tour. Can you share the brand of your shirts? Are they garden supply garden supply shirt slash blouse? These right here, is this what I was wearing? Probably, I wear it like all the time. I've got multiples. This is a Tommy Hilfiger shirt, yeah. and it's super, super lightweight. It's very flimsy, it kind of drives Aaron crazy because my mics are always like... Flopping? I, yeah, I can't put it on my shirt because it flops over like this. And if I put it on my tank top, like you usually wear it right here, like my hair or something else will brush on the, the mic. Yeah. Anyway, but they work They work really well. They Speaking of shirts, we should probably mention oh, yeah. that um, they're on our website now yep. and we're not going to be selling through Teespring anymore. We're doing it ourselves. Yeah. The biggest reason was that people would email with issues or they would like they would send us a shirt and be like can i exchange this and it's like well we didn't send you the shirt to begin with mm -hmm. you know like and we just couldn't do anything mm -hmm. it's like we're not selling you know we didn't create the shirts we didn't ship it and so that kind of created like this weird relationship to where we just we couldn't provide customer service right so anyway so we can now yeah ken and natalie ken uh, our editor video editor and his wife natalie have been working really hard on it so there's um, really like nothing there except for shirts and t-shirts and hoodies but we'll probably build from there yeah once we get our kind of our feet wet with this and yeah. kind of see how it goes um and how you know they like doing it and that sort of thing so so gardenanswer.com yep uh big ross said curious if the neighbors come over to walk through your garden on date night no <laughs> They they will. Um, some of our neighbors will text and ask. Uh, well, occasionally. Yeah. But it's not like. It's all not the time. regular. Yeah. It's maybe like once or twice a year. Yeah. And S. Smurf Monster said, "What? No drone footage for the August Garden Tour? I didn't even think about that. What in the world? Did you not think about it either? I think I maybe did and then forgot. That happens. And you guys, that is it for today's video. A lot of good questions. Yeah. Thank you guys for commenting and watching our videos and all the above. And remember about the $2,500 Country Casualty gift card. 2500 bucks. Yeah. That's a good size gift card. So leave your comment down below. We will pick a winner in probably one week and yeah. put the winner's information down below this video. So be sure to check there. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.